Well, I haven't done a video in a while, so I thought I'd show you um, one of the software things I was uh, playing with on my uh, on my Zeta 2. Um, it's something that I actually wanted to uh, work on when I had my MSI, and I did a little bit, but um, not really. Um, now I have more time. Um, it's a, a, a monitor program. Um, there, there's a lot of these floating around, but this one's kind of special to me. Um, when I was going to college, um, this was back in, must have been 76, 77, or 77, 78. Uh, those two summers, um, I had a, uh, a summer job uh, down in San Diego working for their uh, Naval Research Lab. And um, I was handed this by a software engineer, a real superstar there. Uh, he had written a couple of disassemblers that I was fascinated with. And uh, he gave me this monitor, um, which actually has a, a assembler and a disassembler built into it. It's and it's uh, uh, only 4K in length and rommable, and it's a it's very very pretty code too. He was a really good engineer, uh, wrote really uh, nice assembler code. Um, so um, let me show it to you. Um, like I said, it's 4K in length. Um, I had. Uh, never used it as a standalone monitor, which is the way it was written uh, to reside at uh, location zero in an 8080 system. Um, at some time in 1983, I modified it to uh, 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 be able to be used in CPM. So it loaded at address 100, and uh, uh, but still didn't use any CPM calls or anything. It was still hardware dependent and things like that. Um, so lately what I did was I took it and I modified it for the Z80, uh, Zeta, and um, I added BDOS calls for the I.O. So it's uh, uh, it's more transportable. And I also added a couple uh, uh, additions to it. One is there was no help function. So you, you have to go look through the source code to figure out how to use it. So I added a, a help command, and um, the ASCII dump uh, wasn't to my liking, so I modified that as well. Um, so, um, yeah, what can I really say? I, I added uh, the BDOS calls, the character input, character output, status for character input, and uh, so uh, it uses all, all, uh, all BDOS calls. Um, and it's a very interesting uh, design. Um, it uh, monitors the keyboard and then executes commands. And the commands are these. So this is the table of commands. Like there's a, a, a it stands for address, D stands for dump. Um, and so what you do is you, you type the letter D and uh, it, uh, will uh, go through this table and see if there's a match. So if D matches, it says, oh, OK, well, the address of the routine to run is, th is, is this. And then the address of the text to print is this. So for every command, there's text to print and then an address to jump to to execute uh, the, function that you're, the function that you're doing. So there's a fill command. Uh, I added the uh, H command, the help command, uh, jump to location, uh, all sorts of interesting things. Um, so it's very well documented. Um, it's really, really nice. So um, let, me, um, let me go over to the Z80 uh, terminal window and I'll show you this thing running. OK, uh, let's go to CPM, go over to the A drive, and let's run it. It's called 8080. So uh, it's a system monitor. So if you type H, um, the nice thing about the commands is when you type the H, it automatically types in the ELP. So all the commands are that way. So you say D, it says dump. And you say H, it says hex. So it automatically puts in the lettering. And I thought that was a really nice touch. Um, here you can see it uh, doing the, the hex dump, which is the one that we're normally used to. Um, when it was written, it didn't have that ASCII section uh, over here on the right. So uh, I modified the program to, to, to do the ASCII dump. So if we do something like a dump, uh, I think there's, oops, let's see, dump hex 
Uh, I think at 1,200, there's probably some. Yeah, there we go. There's some ASCII. Um, so you can see that's it's useful to have that ASCII over there. Uh, so we can look at help. Uh, we can do dump hex. We can also do dump symbolic. Uh, dump symbolic is a disassembler. So if we go to 100, you can see that it's actually uh, looking at code and, and deciphering it, um, which is which is really nice. Uh, you can fill memory. Um, so uh, we can say like uh, dump hex 2000, 2100. There's some stuff here. We can say fill uh, 2000 to 2100. We can fill it with say 55. Yes. Now we can say dump hex 2000, 2100. You can see it's all filled with fives. Um, so that's what fill jump goes to a jump location. Um, load hex, that's uh, Intel hex format. You can load symbolic. So we can say load symbolic 2000. That's our starting. We can say something like no op. We can say uh, output uh, uh, 00FF. Uh, we could say move immediate A uh, 23. Actually, has to have 0023. Um, then we can say uh, dump bytes or dump hex uh, 2000, 2100. You can see there's our program 00D3FF. Um, oh, I screwed up here. Um, let's see here. Dump. I I did so, I typed too fast and kind of crashed it. Let me let me go back in. Okay, dump hex. Yeah, there we go. So now I can say dump symbolic 2000, uh, 2010. So there, there's our no op, our output, and our move A. So it's very nice. It has an assembler, it has a disassembler. Um, you can test memory. You can say test uh, 2000. 2100. Yes, I want to test it. it. Says RAM's okay. Uh, you can punch. So we can say uh, say punch hex, which is Intel hex format. Uh, say 100. Oops. Oh, I say 1000, 1200. Uh, waits for a pause and then creates Intel hex. Um, uh, register display. Those are the registers. You can modify them. Uh, you can zap memory, which is just set it to zero. It's the same as a fill command, except for zero, zero. Anyway, uh, it's really cool. Uh, if I did a jump to location zero, zero, that's the entry point to CPM. So I get the APROMP for CPM. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what I've been doing. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool little program.